Hoop Streams back at it, coming to you live on Twitter and the ESPN app. I'm Cassidy Hubbard in NYC. Perkin Amin will be joining us in just a minute, but right now I'm here with the Malika Andrews, who's been in Orlando in the bubble for what, 10 days now, Malika? I've lost track. Is that bad okay. that it's this early on? <laughs> I'll try to keep, I'll try to keep less than track two. for you. <laughs> right. Perfect. As we're hoping to do this every week uh, and go inside the bubble with you. Um, so, Malika, you're starting to get some company there. What can you tell yeah. us about the, the process for team arrivals as you, you've been going through for the last few days? Yeah, so so players actually started arriving yesterday with the Orlando Magic being the first team to officially touch down on campus. Uh, and teams are going to continue to trickle in over the course of today and then also tomorrow. So when teams actually get to campus, they're going to a testing room, which is located in each of the hotels, to get tested for coronavirus and then begin a 48 our quarantine. And during the course of that quarantine, they have to register two negative COVID tests before they can get out and enjoy life on the campus. And during their quarantine, uh, someone is actually going to come up to their rooms to test each of the players. And then also their meals are going to be brought to their door three times a day, every single day. So for the first 48 hours that these guys are on campus, they're not going to be able to roam around. They're going to be confined to their room. But the teams that arrived yesterday, so long as they clear both of their negative tests, they are scheduled to start practicing tomorrow. So I'll be there for that. Well, we've got a few peeks already behind the curtain on Instagram. Well, your Instagram first and foremost, but also from some players and Troy Daniels and Evan Fournier. Um, it's early. We had some people kind of talking about fire festival food, but you've enjoyed the food. Uh, what's the sense of everyone's comfort level so far, specifically in quarantine? Well, you know, I, I was just on a call with John Horst where he said that food was a discussion that just came up over and over and over again throughout the course of when they were actually planning for what it was going to be like in the bubble. And I understand that, yes, during this quarantine, during the quarantine, the quarantine, see, I can pronounce things, um, <laughs> there, the food did resemble a little bit like airplane food. A lot of it was prepackaged, but all of that, you have to understand, is done in the name of not wanting to touch the food. They don't want the people who are handling and preparing the food to be touching what players are going to then be ingesting and putting into their mouth. So when they get out of that 48 hour quarantine period, they're going to be able to walk around, choose what food they want. They can order a steak, a nice steak, if that's what they're going to want to eat. There are going to be more options when they get out of that initial quarantine period. But it, it's mixed, right? I think the NBA has done everything they possibly can for, for players, for team staff, for reporters, to make people feel as comfortable as possible on campus. They've been incredibly accommodating with certain things, but it's hard to feel completely comfortable in a place where you know that so much of what is being done is being done out of precautions to protect yourself against a disease that is so incredibly contagious. Well, I, so basically you've been out of quarantine, so you're no longer getting your food delivered to you. Um, I also want to know the safety, the precautions that, you know, you're taking because um, you're getting, there's a lot of technology uh, in, in place to try to help make sure they're, um, you yeah. know, tracking if the virus is entering the bubble. Yeah, I mean, in addition to the 113, or maybe to supplement the 113 page safety protocol, there mm -hmm. is uh, abundance of technology that is being used. So every morning, Cassidy, us, players are asked to take a couple of readings, one of a thermometer and two of this pulse ox meter that just goes on your finger and the reading comes back when facing you. And you're going to record those numbers into an app that the MBA made. And so then every day when you are trying to go into, whether it's a practice or any really any part of the campus, they're going to scan this band that I'm wearing that also gets me into my hotel room. And if that band then lights up green, that means the numbers that I enter are congruent with being a healthy person and I'll be able to access practices, games, and other things. If it lights up blue, that means that maybe I had a fever or some of the data that I entered needs to be taken another look at just to make sure that I'm completely healthy. And then on top of that, we're also supposed to be getting these devices that act as sort of sensors within the next couple of days. And they just clip to our credentials. Players will be wearing them too. And if you get within six feet of another person for five seconds, that device will start to light up. 
And then if you are within six feet of another person for 10 seconds, it will start to beep. And they, I was told they had to play a little bit with the, the audio with the levels because at first it was a really a blaring loudness. They didn't, they wanted to kind of avoid that. So they scaled it back. And all of that is on top of the aura rings that I was fitted for this week and that players were fitted for before they came. This is the, the fitting kit where you just choose your size, you try it on and then you fill out um, a questionnaire in order to get those rings. And those rings track early symptoms of coronavirus. And that data from the rings, the rings are optional, but the NBA has been very clear. There's been a lot of discussion about you know, using that data, weaponizing that data in the future. The NBA has repeatedly said that they will be wiping that data and won't be sharing it past this season. I guess we're starting to get an idea of that $150 million that's being spent inside this bubble. But I, I do want to talk a little bit more about this technology. So you're saying you have that the monitors that, that beep when you're in, in close proximity to, to people. But when you get out of quarantine and you get to choose your meals, what what's the situation as far as do you, do you go to a restaurant? Um, do you order from somebody? What's the interaction with the food service when you're out of quarantine? You got options now. When you get out of quarantine, I mean, the world is your oyster. Well, not really, but your <laughs> hotel within the bubble is your oyster. But I haven't actually seen oysters on the menu. So I'm free to roam around. Um, I choose to, I, I'm much more in the Damian Lillard camp of I go outside for, for work purposes um, and then I, I enjoy my recreational time, the very little I have in my hotel room. I exercise in my hotel room just because I want to minimize contact with other people. But now, yes, I'm free to walk around my hotel part of campus. Um, there's a lot of outdoor space. There's a waterfront to walk on that has signs that say, be careful, watch out for alligators and snakes. So you know I'm watching out for them alligators and snakes. Um, and then the food, yeah, you are able to go into, it's almost like a, a college style food court. It was a restaurant, but they converted it because the restaurant just closed. And you can, during certain hours of the day, so for instance, uh, dinner is from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. every night, you can walk into that food court and you see that they have soup, you see they have pasta, maybe they have a salad. Last night it was sort of an Asian fusion theme with dumplings and sushi. And you can pick up a couple of uh, pre-packaged meals to go or whatever you want, kind of a la carte. And you can either eat that outside, eat that at the socially distanced tables in the cafeteria, or you can eat it in your room. And then Where for the, the picky Disney eaters out there. America, are they close yeah. by, the Disney workers, are they close by? Yeah, so that's something that obviously has been brought up, you know, several times. And the Disney workers, I have seen them, you know, doing their their work around the, the campus, the property. They're bringing towels to rooms if you request it. Um, but Disney workers, when I walked by any Disney worker, they have been so respectful to not only stop, but sometimes will back up four, six, eight feet to give me room just to walk by them without having to get within each other's space. So we're making sure we maintain social distance. It really, for me, has not been an issue with any employee getting in my space. I, I locked myself out of my room on accident. When I went up to the lobby, there were there was uh, almost a partition in between myself and the person I was talking to. When they walked me back to my room, we were 10 feet apart. They're really going above and beyond not to get within anybody's space. Okay, I know you're super busy. So just one more before we let you go. Um, you cover the Nets closely and, and they, they've been dominating a lot of the news lately as far as positive tests. According to reports, Torian Prince has tested positive, will be the fourth Nets player who's opted out of the league's restart. Spencer Dinwiddie tweeted yesterday the had a second positive test and team doctors decided it was uh, you know not best for him to play. So what can you tell us about the evaluation process for the Nets to rule these guys out completely for a return, given that according to the Roach's report, it was because the late timing of the positive tests. Yeah, I mean, that's really uh, uh, the bulk of it is the late timing of the positive test. And in the case of Spencer Dinwiddie, um, for Torian Prince, you know, he had just recently tested positive as they were preparing to leave. And then for Spencer Dinwiddie, he's saying that he's still experiencing symptoms to the point where sometimes he's still struggling to get out of bed. He struggled to use the exercise equipment that the team sent him a bike. He was getting tired just from doing that. And so that lends itself to thinking that perhaps running up and down playing five on five basketball just isn't going to be in the cards for him, especially considering, you know, Rudy Gobert is now healthy, testing negative 
negative and made the trip to Orlando with the Jazz. But considering he's told a French newspaper that he still doesn't fully have his sense of smell yet, that it takes a while for some of those symptoms to go away, the doctors just felt as though for now with the, the symptoms that those players are experiencing, they may not be healthy enough, even if they do start to test negative symptoms wise and, and just weakness wise and health wise to be able to get back on the court and perform. So they just decided, you know what, let's play it safe. We're missing so many people already. Let's just make sure we're really protecting these players. Well, the Nets have three roster spots available to sign substitute players for the restart. You're there for the whole ride and you've been fantastic. Yeah. I believe 10 days. I'm keeping, I'm keeping track. Thank you very much. You better keep me honest. Stay safe. <laughs> Thank you, Cassidy.